Okay, my friends, here it is. In this video, I'm gonna show you a very valuable resource that you definitely need to be doing to boost your plant's overall health. Also, the, the vibrancy of the colors, the flavors will become more intense, the nutrient density will become greater, the aromas will become stronger, the blooms will become brighter. All of that is benefited by what I'm gonna show you in this video, okay? So you're gonna get a lot of ideas in this video because I'm gonna say a few words about what's happening here and then we're gonna go out into the garden and I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it and you will see the proof that this actually really works because I'll give you a little bit of a garden tour as well at the same time, okay? So uh, the resource, the thing that I'm gonna be talking about in this video is the foliar feeding. Now, plants have evolved alongside of birds and insects and all of that. So the excrement from the birds and the insects sort of is very, very rich in nutrients. So therefore, plants have evolved to be able to absorb nutrients through their leaves, not just the roots. So they do this by the stomata of the plant leaves. Stomata are like the pores in our skin. They allow the plant to breathe and to absorb water and nutrients and air and things like this. Also, they do this but through the epidermis. The epidermis of a plant is the single layer of cells that create a barrier between the interior of the plant and the exterior of the plant. We'll just keep it simple, leave it at that. And through those methods, the plant can absorb nutrients. So we are going to utilize this and we are going to foliar feed one time a week. So you've watched the other video I made about how to uh, apply the fertilizers more of the root drench with the barrel and all of that. We do that one time a week, and then preferably on the opposite side of the week, we do one foliar feeding. And to do that, we're going to, and I'll show you multiple different recipes, uh, but we're going to use a sprayer. Now there's different kinds of sprayers. There's these pump sprayers, there is this kind of sprayer if you got a real small garden, a much smaller garden. Uh, there's backpack sprayers, there's uh, ones with gas powered sprayers. I mean, I've used all those stuffs in California I've used all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't really matter exactly what kind. I'll put some links in the, in the description so that you guys can see examples of what I'm talking about. Uh, but it doesn't really matter what kind, it's so long as it sprays, all right? So um, get your sprayer and let's go on out. I'm gonna show you exactly how it's done. Okay, step one is to fill the container mostly full with water. Uh, guys, let me know if you wanna see a video on how I made this simple rainwater collection system. Rainwater's best, but tap water will work if you must. Okay, now that you have it filled just below the one gallon line, now is when you add your ingredients. And I'm gonna show you three different recipes uh, of exactly what to use based upon what you want from the plants, all right? So you're gonna get a lot of ideas here, so take notes, even if it's just mental notes. Now that all the ingredients are into the sprayer, we want to pressurize it and then adjust the nozzle. You see, this here is too much of a stream. It's too intense. So we want it to be a really fine spray. So we're gonna adjust it so that you see this is like a nice, fine, even spray. That's what we want. Now we're ready. And we begin spraying. We simply indiscriminately spray all parts of the plant. Everything is going to love this. The blooms, the flowers, all of it. Now, we want to spray the leaves until we see uh, the solution running off, you see? That's how we know it's enough. And then, uh, sometimes we want to hit the undersides of the leaves as well, like this here, because there's stomata on the underside of the leaves as well. So here I'm gonna give you the formula for encouraging luscious leafy green growth. I'll put it on the screen. It is one ounce of fish, one ounce of urine, one ounce of grass jadam liquid fertilizer, and one ounce of the Castile oil soap. Now we mix all that up and once a week we spray it onto the plants and that encourages this luscious leafy growth. Now you will see here on the Swiss chart that they are taking really well to this. We hit the underside of the leaves as well wherever possible and that is going to produce this deep colors and flavor. This Swiss chard is so flavorful, it's beautiful. Now. Something that I want you to notice here is that we have Egyptian walking onions, we have calendulas right directly next to the collard greens, which are beautiful and thriving. So we're hitting them with the leafy green uh, encouraging fertilizer mixture right now. And if we take a closer look, we can see that there's almost no pest pressure. A tiny little bit, a little bit of cabbage worm pressure right there from a caterpillar, but that we can totally deal with. These are absolutely beautiful, edible, nutrient-dense, nutrient-rich, 
and thriving. This whole entire line along the fence is thriving in the same way. In fact, pretty much all the garden is thriving in the same way. So as we get into the tour, you're going to see the specifics of how this happens. But every inch of this space is growing food. Every green thing you see here is food in some way or another. High intensity, high yields. You can see here, five different kinds of beans are loving life right now. I love beans and they are loving life. So what I want to show you here is that there's marigolds, there's uh, fennel and calendula all surrounding the, the left, what is left of the cabbages. Uh, I'm going to end up harvesting the rest of them because we're just about to replant the fall planting of cabbages. But I want you to see how it's all right up in the mix. There's some, a few weeds here and there, but that just doesn't matter, my friends. High intensity, high yields. Now look here. You can see the beautiful, luscious poblano peppers. And these are doing really well. And that's obvious by the way that they look. And they're very firm and meaty. And the way that they taste is so incredibly delicious. But thankfully, I have this vicious predator guarding the poblanos. Now, we spray these as well. We spray the fruits, the roots, the shoots, the leaves, all of it. And we're going to spray this with the fruiting mixture. And this is going to help encourage the hard, flavorful fruits and flowers as well. So one ounce of fish, one ounce of ash, one teaspoon of the soluble calcium, one ounce of the grass liquid fertilizer, and one ounce of the Castile oil soap. We will spray that directly on the fruits and the flowers, and it will bolster the health of all things involved. Now you see here the tub of sweet potatoes are really loving life. They are producing nice, healthy uh, shoots that I each eat like spinach sometimes. And here is the upcoming uh, brassicas, the fall planting of cabbages. And I'm just going to go ahead and foliar those as well. And those are doing really nice uh, and firm as well. Because you always want to be having rotations of cabbages. This one here was almost past its prime. And this ones here are just starting to come up. And they're just starting to head. You see here is the um, pole beam privacy fence that I made the video about. I'll put a link to it here. But they are really, they climbed all the way up to 10 feet and fell back down and climbing up again. Okay guys, by this point in the video, hopefully you've gained something. So go ahead and reciprocate that by leaving a thumbs up and leaving a comment. Helps the algorithm grow the channel and obviously we're all about growing things here. So it doesn't matter what the comment is, just first thing that comes to mind, go ahead and leave it. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna go around front and I'll show you guys the kinds of blooms that these foliar sprays and natural fertilizers all produce. The proof is right here, my friends. It's as unarguable that it works, okay? So there's a lot of flowers here. These are the giant Indiana coxcomb from Baker Creek Seeds. And there's lemon balm and mint behind it and uh, calendulas and nasturtiums and petunias, all different kinds of stuff. It's all loving life. You see right here, these are Tabasco peppers, actual Tabascos. I ferment my own sauce with them. I usually use cayennes, but this year I'm growing a Tabasco pepper plant, which is fruiting really nicely. And I'm spraying it all with this fruiting flowering mixture. Here's the, the cayenne peppers. And here is a major, major uh, uh, beneficial plant for the insects, the pollinators. I don't know if you can see it well in this video, but this whole thing is swarming with pollinators all day long. It is a fennel plant and it keeps coming back every year. I cut it down all the way and it just comes back. And there's so many beautiful pollinators on it. And it has this beautiful aroma that fills the whole yard with this fennel anise kind of licorice sort of smell. And you can see how much the pollinators are loving it. Now over here, you're going to see this is the, it's finally starting to take off. And this is the pole bean privacy fence in the front yard. So I just string up some strings and let the rattlesnake pole beans, these are rattlesnakes from Baker Creek Seeds, rattlesnake pole beans, and I eat these as a green bean. And then at the end of the year, just let them go and they turn into a dried shelling bean. Uh, but there's so many benefits. They produce food, fresh food, also dried food, but also in about another couple weeks, these will totally block out that whole part of the uh, porch. Now, remember the um, video that I made that I'll put a link to right here about how to make the pallet potato bed where I used no nails and it was just all constructed in just like an hour. I pulled the pallet apart. Well, it is still doing really well, of course. Here's the potatoes and they are in full swing. They are nice and healthy, just starting to flower. You see no pest pressure, really, no diseases, no anything like that because I'm foliaring and I'm feeding them the root drench 
all of this. Now I want to show you in the front of the house uh, because I don't have a garage at this space so I'm making do with what I got. But here, 212 cloves of garlic from a 5 by 10 foot space. That's an awesome yield. And I planted these in the fall. I'll show you guys all about how to plant garlic and how to prepare the beds and all that stuff. Leave me a comment if you want to see the garlic video when it's time. Uh, but this is going to keep me supplied with garlic all winter long because I'm going to take about 50 of those cloves and replant them. But here is the onions. I love onions. These are the Australian brown onion from Baker Creek Seeds. These are an intermediate day onion. I just harvested them. Nice and firm and very pungent, full of sulfuric compounds. These will last all winter long. They keep no problem. As opposed to these big Spanish yellows. These are a sweet onion, but they don't keep as long. The sweeter the onion, the less amount of time that it keeps because there's less sulfur. Now these are New York early onions from fruition seeds and those are really delicious uh, and keep a long time. These are Weatherfield red onions from Baker Creek seeds and they keep a long time as well. Storage is the number one thing that I focus on. So when it comes time, I'm just gonna move this and I'm gonna have a, a partner help me and gonna move both of these racks straight into the basement as they are. I'm gonna cut the bottom off and then you'll see. Okay, my friends, so hopefully you have watched to this point in the video, okay, because I'm about to tell you the most important thing of this entire operation, and that is this. Do not ever spray in the sunlight. You must spray only in the very early morning before the sun even rises or in the after late, late evening to when the sun is going down, and that's how I prefer to do it. For this example purpose in this video, I was only using water. Okay, because if you spray in the day and the, and the direct sunlight hits it, it will burn the plants. So you have been warned, my friend, spray in the evening with the headlamp. That's the best time.